TLC's 90 Day Fiancé and its many spin-off shows follow the lives of international couples who go to great lengths to be together and make their romances work despite the many challenges they face. Overcoming cultural differences as well as the pressure of having to get married within the three month time period dictated by the K-1 visa process creates a lot of drama on the show and while there are quite a few couples that didn't make it, here are 10 of the happiest stories featured on 90 Day Fiancé. Season 5's Evelyn Cormier from the small New Hampshire town of Claremont and David Vasquez Zermeno from Spain met after David discovered Evelyn's band on Facebook and sent her a message. He was 27 at the time, while Evelyn was only 18 and the age difference was not the only challenge the couple faced. They clashed over differences in maturity, wedding planning and their respective ideas about living in a small town versus moving to a bigger city. They did agree on staying virgins until marriage though, due to their Christian values and eventually settled their differences and got married in October 2017. A couple of years later, these two are still going strong, with David having supported Evelyn on her American Idol journey where she advanced to the top 14. Despite not making it into the top 10 of season 17, Evelyn is still recording and producing music, and it seems like she and David are still very much in love and enjoying life as a married couple. Narkia and Aluloo Lathan Shadite from season 4 didn't seem like a couple that would really work out. But despite a rocky start, these two are still going strong. They first connected via a plus size dating site, with Narkia living in Pennsylvania when Aluloo was living in Vietnam at the time. Their relationship wasn't off to the best start, as it turned out that Aluloo had been lying about still being in contact with his child's mother and also made false claims about being a Nigerian prince. However, despite several breakups, and sporadic lies, Narkia and Aluloo eventually got married and he moved to the US. Today they are still married and raising their blended family together. Narkia also recently underwent gastric sleeve surgery to help her lose weight and has been documenting her weight loss journey on her Instagram. Against all odds, these two are still happily married and have proved that their relationship is strong enough to last despite all of the 90 day fiancé drama. Moldovan Andre Kastrovet was living in Dublin when he met Elizabeth Pothas, and while they instantly felt a connection, it was also an immediate clash of cultures when Andre met Elizabeth's family. With Andre believing that a woman should be more submissive to her husband, he didn't want Elizabeth to go out alone, while her family strongly disagreed with this belief. However, the couple stuck together despite the lack of support from some of Elizabeth's family members. Ask him for a job. I don't want to ask for him for because a job. Because if you're proud no. in your ego, you refuse. No, I'm going to solve it. And I'm, I'm going to solve stressed it. out and I'm pregnant solve it. and have all this weight don't, on my don't, shoulders. Don't terrorize me with your pregnancy and eventually got married and welcomed baby daughter Eleanor in January 2019 into their little family. Melanie Bowers and Devar Walters met when she was on vacation in Jamaica and soon appeared on season 3 of 90 Day Fiancé. Like so often, Melanie's family was a bit worried that Devar was only trying to use her to come to the US and then leave her once he had enough money to send to his family back home. However, Melanie trusted Devar and the fact that he made a lot of effort with her son from a previous marriage, Hunter, confirmed her decision to marry Devar. Despite some ups and downs, Melanie and Devar are still happily married and in November 2017, they welcomed daughter Ava into the family. Proud dad and husband Devar regularly post pictures of his little family on his Instagram that should silence even the last skeptics. When we first met Rachel and John in season 2 of 90 Day Fiancé before the 90 days, none of us really thought this was going to work out and viewers were actually quite concerned about Rachel. She was a single mother from Albuquerque, New Mexico, who had fallen in love with a guy from England she had met on a karaoke app. Well, John seemed rather mysterious and has a violent criminal record according to In Touch. Although Rachel was aware of taking a huge risk by traveling to England with her baby to meet John, she decided to do it anyway and 
unfortunately, John turned out to be a great man. Having gotten into some fights in his past, John had completely turned his life around and was nothing but a harmless teddy bear. The couple got married in a beautiful garden wedding in 2018, and although they are still happily together, they are also still working on getting John to the US, which is proving to be quite a challenge thanks to John's criminal record and due to the amount of money they had to save up in order to even start the visa process. If this isn't love, then I don't know what it is. Well, on a Bible study trip in Australia, season two's Danny Frismith met Amy from South Africa and subsequently spent a lot of time traveling back and forth to visit her. While Danny was soon convinced he wanted to spend the rest of his life with Amy and most of his family was supportive, his father was against the marriage because of Amy's race. The couple decided to remain virgins until marriage and eventually got married in July 2014. Last summer, the couple celebrated their fifth wedding anniversary and they are still happily together living in Texas with their two children, Jedediah and Anna. Lauren and Alexi Brovernick appeared on season 3 of 90 Day Fiancé after Alexi had proposed to Lauren after spending merely 10 days together in Israel. Their relationship had a rocky start with Lauren moving back in with her parents in order to save money before their wedding, and they faced further trouble when Lauren tried to convince her future husband to start modeling, something he did not want to pursue. However, they eventually managed to overcome all these issues and now live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, as we learned on the follow-up episode episode of 90 Day Fiancé Happily Ever After. In October 2019, the young couple announced that they were expecting their first child and recently revealed that the baby will be a boy due to be born in May. We're like a normal couple. We're like no big, we're really not big deals. We're just a married couple, honestly. We fight a lot. Like everybody do. And we get through it like everybody else. While on vacation, Kalani Fagata met Asulu Pula in Samoa, and they immediately had a connection. So Kalani decided to lose her virginity to Asulu. Soon after their relationship began, she became pregnant with their first child, Oliver. Kalani gave birth to Oliver back in California while still in a long distance relationship with Asulu. Her protective family wasn't thrilled to find out about Kalani's unexpected pregnancy, especially since they had never met the father of the baby. Kalani's sister was also convinced that Asulu was not the right person for Kalani due to his absence during the early months of Oliver's life, not to mention infidelity accusations and his maturity level. Although their relationship wasn't off to the best start, Kalani and Asulu got married in September 2018, and while filming season 6 of 90 Day Fiancé, Kalani became pregnant with their second child, Kennedy, who was born in May 2019. In September last year, the couple celebrated their one-year wedding anniversary, and videos and photos that Kalani often shares on her Instagram show that they are a very happy family. Alan Cox was on a Mormon mission trip in Brazil when he met and fell in love with Curl Yom. This couple from the very first season of the show is yet another one that vowed to stay virgins until marriage, which meant that a lot of their tension on the show came from trying to stay true to their beliefs. The two were married in a Mormon temple in September 2013, with Curl Yom's family being unable to attend but streaming the whole event from Brazil. Four years later in 2017, the couple welcomed their first child Liam Jordan Dakota to Cox, and it seems like Curlyam is completely taken up in her role as a mother and wife, often posting pictures on social media with Alan and Liam. The couple celebrated their sixth wedding anniversary a few months ago and appear to be just as in love as they were the day they tied the knot. Kyle and his Thai fiance Noon seemed to have an instant connection from the very moment they met. Viewers loved the way they hugged and cried at the airport at the beginning of their 90 days, and the fact that Kyle could open up to Noon about his problems with his parents and count on her support showed that these two truly cared for each other. Unlike so many other couples on the show, there was little drama with these two and they actually faced some shockingly normal problems, such as Noon not being too happy with Kyle's dirty bachelor pad or Kyle's mom being rude to Noon noon and asking her if she was only marrying Kyle for a green card. However, all in all, this couple got through the 90 days rather peacefully before getting married at the end of season 3 and they are still together today, often sharing pictures of their life together on Instagram. Thank you for checking this video out and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day.
turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again, thank you for watching and see you next time.